You can get your SH Monster Arts at Big Bad Toy Store. Check out the link in the description below. Hello there, collectors. It is Steven here with another SH Repaint Arts review of the Orai Noriyoshi poster color with a side of bacon, Godzilla. Though a companion piece to the completely new Chogokin Mecha Godzilla, Bandai has ran this sculpt into the ground with six releases, including a reissue with different paint for birth version. And at about $75, do you really need this? I know why you're here. So, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. <sighs> you know the story. Sculpted by Yuji Sakai, originally intended to be Burning Godzilla, blah, blah, blah. But this time, this is supposed to be the Godzilla from the vs. Mechagodzilla 2, but glowing as if he's firing his beam from the poster. Or something, I don't know anymore, because apparently something meant to be relatively majestic and awe-inspiring means cheap cash grab with the wrong suit design and muddy paint apps. Yeah, the 95 suit was much more bulky and had different features like dorsal plate arrangement and things like that, but hey, a repaint's a repaint. Thing is, that aside, Bandai's process just isn't very good and we ended up with inconsistent paint apps throughout. Like blue where it has no business being, it's just randomly in one spot, I guess, or there's no shading effects, things like that. But what I will commend them on would be the eye decals and the facial features. The eyes are a nice yellow to orange starburst effect, which are really, really done well. I have to say that eyes like these, the best we've seen on a Godzilla in recent years. And the teeth are actually sharp and pointy. We have fangs here, which is a nice plus. They are indeed sharp, and you don't want to poke yourself. You'll uh, feel a little bit of pain. We also do have some nice details in the face. Now, let's take a closer examination of the body. Instead of a sort of glittery effect with nice evenness, we get this rather interesting in concept, but not so much in execution, muddy Godzilla design with some blue highlights. Now, see, here's where I'm torn. I like this concept, but I feel like they just slapped glossy paint everywhere and called it a day. The torso has the majority of the blue paint, and it has uneven amounts on the arms. This is something I've brought up many times in other reviews. Is this design chaotic? Yes, but it was designed to be in a specific way, meaning that the shine from the lit up dorsal plate should have a method to how they would light up the skin, even if it's uneven. However, there was a disregard for that here in the figure. I mean, just look at the claws. Bandai seems to have given up here, and yeah. But I like the charm this figure has, and again, I'm analyzing this critically for the purposes of a review. But realistically speaking, it's a swampy mess. But I personally find it to be a somewhat enjoyable mess. Again, I think the concept is cool. I don't know. You guys like it when I give my opinion more on here. So whether or not I like it or calling it out, good, bad idea, fellas, let me know how it is. Anyway, the strongest part of the figure, I would have to say, aside from those eyes, would be the frosty plates, which unfortunately mine were scuffed a bit out of the box. However, they're made of a nice, pretty translucent plastic that carries on throughout the tail. Don't believe me? Wait and see. Anyway, the paint, again, is inconsistent, which is a bit bleh, but honestly, at this point, it's kind of a standard to be expected with the line. Whether or not it's a good thing remains to be seen. So, now, let's look at the translucent parts of the figure. Basically, everything on this guy is translucent from the head down to the tip of the tail. Essentially, only the legs aren't, so this is sweet. That's why he's so expensive, I think. In sum, he looks alright, absolutely not for everyone, but despite him being sloppy, I do find the concept to have some charm. Now for the proof that the plates, and pretty much the entire body, is translucent. Here's me going up and down with a white light. Looks really nice. But for something much more vibrant, here's a blue light. Looks a little purple because of camera and setting and all that, but it does look really neat. Now, here's the thing. When setting up for a display for this guy, I don't really know what's better. Just the blue light? White light? Or a mix of both? In all seriousness, this figure would have benefited from the gimmick because you can see the paint glowing in certain spots. It really looks awesome, but nah, they didn't do that. By this point, you should be very familiar with this Godzilla's articulation, so I'm going to do a quick rundown, and I'm only going to note the things that I feel are different 
on this one compared to the other 95 releases that I have because, oh boy, do I got them. So mouth opens, closes, ball joint. You get a little bit of wiggle there. A couple ball joints for the neck, which mine are actually pretty loose. Yeah, that's not good. We have ball jointed shoulders. So move out about that far. You can raise and lower, but um, kind of tight in that regard here. And you are going to grind up against the sculpt here if you do that. So I would advise you to be careful. We do have bicep swivels, which are actually ball joints. So that's nice. Elbow hinge. We do have ball jointed wrists, which are actual ball joints. And that is because you can swap hands. So yeah, we do get that as an accessory. Woo, yay. So we do have a ball joint for the ab crunch and for the waist. This ball joint here doesn't really want to move for me, which is unfortunate. I mean, it does. I can twist and turn Godzilla, but it it's kind of stiff. I don't like that. But yeah, we can get Godzilla to bend down about that far, up about that far, which is pretty cool. Then we have the hips, which people still can't figure out that, you know, you can either have a horrible gap like that or, oh, no gap at all. Oh, it was so scary. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, the double access or barbell style ball jointed hips are always a plus. We do have hinged knees as normal with some ball joints in the shin, calf, ankle area. So this way we can get a sumo wrestler Godzilla. Uh, not too, too much, though, but that's still cool. And then we do have the same limited Heisei Godzilla tail because we only have a few ball joints up until this portion, which is just a solid piece of sculpt. So there you go. Uh, that is once again for the umpteenth time, umpteenth time, the bajillionth time, however you want to say it, in whatever way, shape, or form, the articulation for Godzilla 1995. Not as good as Shin. Okay, now for accessories, Godzilla comes with a set of splayed hands. Yeah, very empowering, I guess you might say. Um, we, we really don't need these too much. I already swapped one of them out. All you have to do is pop them off and put the new one on. But the really cool thing that Godzilla comes with is this postcard. Yeah, it's not really a postcard. It's just this little card with the Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla 2 poster artwork on it and unfortunately yeah mine did get dinged up a bit in shipping but um yeah on one side it has the poster and on the other side it just has promotional information for that along with not for sale like i would sell this anyway uh this is pretty high quality cardstock i'd say here this is a nice solid poster feel to it it's uh yeah it it, 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 it it's it's good it, it, it very good thumbs up um um, while that's, while that's, that, that, that's all fine and dandy, um, we, we, we have a problem. Let's, let's bring this back in. He, he charged beam. G Godzilla charged beam. He has glowy dorsal plates. There's no beam. Why is there no beam? Why do I have accent now? Yeah. So uh, he doesn't come with uh, really anything of value. Because, I mean, that thing, you could just print it off on cardstock. That, I mean, there's no signature. There's, like, no serial number X out of X. Who cares? The hands, who cares? I mean, this was a chance where we could actually get a blue beam into the hands of collectors. And instead of doing that... We get nothing. And since this is a repaint, here's a comparison with 1995 birth version. Eh, maybe, you know, Burning Godzilla would have been a bit better. But uh, still, you know, we need a comparison with the base paint version of this figure. So, yeah, here you go. Here's where the paint differences are. Yeah, my birth version's a little worse for wear. But anyway, you can see there is a drastic difference in the paint scheme. And a size comparison because we need those next to the Mecha Godzilla released alongside this one because everything's better in pairs. Yep, even these guys. And I'm not going to reuse these shots later.
Nope. <clears throat> so buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Looks wise, you're either digging this or not, but at the end of the day, the paint applications just frankly are not that great. Articulation is the same as before, and accessories are legit disappointing. Now, hear me out. Back when this figure and Mechagodzilla were initially revealed, we had a glimpse of a 1995 figure with blue dorsal plates in front of the Mechagodzilla, and despite it being another one, we in the super articulated kaiju collector group were hyped because we were getting a Spitfire Heisei Godzilla and probably another shot at a blue beam. Didn't turn out to be the case. Instead, this middle of the road grossly overpriced repaint in air quotes here, poster colors. Instead of a Spitfire beam effect or just a charge up beam effect to complete the look of the actual poster this Godzilla comes from, we get a glorified postcard. This figure, really is just for completionists or those who really like the concept of this concept figure. Otherwise, save that $75 for something better. And by the way, concept, count how many times I've said that in this review. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind the scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected SDR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description too to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch ya in the next video.